Hey folks, Captain Dave here. Woo! Man, is it hot outside. Especially when you're out working on the boat, getting her cleaned up. Got me, uh, you know, a little, one of my two hour kids trips tomorrow. And um, I was thinking, you know, I was in here looking at the kick a mullet. Here's the kick a mullet. And uh, this is the ones that I've been using. As you can see, they're silver, black back. Actually, I mean, I kind of looked through them here in the light and uh, almost kind of see through it a little bit. But I just got these in the mail. That's the Kick A mullet. Black. Black with a chartreuse tail. And of course, as this goes back and forth, you know, as a on a on a surface bait. Actually, this is a suspending bait, but you could reel it right across the top. That's how I get most of all my strikes is just reeling it real slow right across the top of the water. Well, why did I go and order a whole bunch of black ones when I got a whole bunch of silver ones? Like these. Well, I was thinking. You know, you get that early, early morning glow in the sky, right? Sun's just coming up, and I'm, I'm, you know, kind of believing. I don't know if this is, and I can't prove it by any means, but I'm kind of having an idea here that. The direction of the sun when a fish goes for a topwater plug. Actually, you know, it means something. And, you know, hey, trout don't have eyelids. They can't squint. You know, so if I'm a trout, and here this is going across the surface. And it's, you know, it's at that perfect situation where... That trout's lurking in that deep water. He hears this thing. He senses some motion. He comes up. It's that early morning light. The light's just coming off the horizon. That's when I love to be out there. I love to be on point when that sun just starts to peak up. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, he's looking up. He's coming out. Of the uh, she's coming out because that's that big, big sow of a trout we're looking for. Coming up out of the depths, you know, there's mullet running around. And this versus this color, light, dark, going across the surface will prevent or will give more of a shadow effect. So, hey, there's no rules in fishing. All we do is we play. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going to try dark versus light. You've seen what's been caught on here. I've got the videos on my blog. You know, we've, you've seen the women using this and taking it on a spinning rod and casting it as far far as they possibly can and I tell them to give a one two three count and then start reeling it in real slow they don't have to do anything special okay and that trout comes up I've seen the trout waken behind the wake that this throws I've seen their tail waken okay and that's you know they get blasted. These things get blasted. It's really too bad. You can't find this little lure right here anywhere in, you know, northeast Florida, that's for sure. But with that, whew, man, I had to, 
had to towel off after being outside. But with that said, I did a short but brief uh, update to the forecast on my homepage of my website. And I'm getting kind of excited for the sheer fact that, you know, when I pull out my go-to Tide book, I got it right here. I use, and I catch myself with a kick aim of it, I use nothing but the Florida Sportsman Tide Planner. You get in a habit of where you want to look at the tides. I don't care if you get in a habit of looking at the tides and the dang local newspaper. But I get used to looking at the tides in the Florida, uh, Florida Sportsman Tide Planner. Just to show you how much I go back and review tides. Here's 2012's book sitting right here in the wolf den. I can put my hands right on it. Here's this year's. I can put my hands on every Florida Sportsman Tide Planner going back for since the first one they ever made, I think. Okay, when they first started publishing it. And the deal is I started looking after I did my little updated forecast on my homepage of my website. And I started looking at September, and I knew this already, but hey, I'm kind of ate up with it. I, I like to look. And I started looking at the average tides of September. And if you kind of average them all out from August to September, of course, the tides are that much, a little bit higher, a little bit stronger. I always say, because I'm a float rig fisherman at heart, one thing float rig fishing will do, it will teach you everything that you need to know about the tides. And with that, you learn current velocity. Okay? Because that is what's important to a float rig fisherman. So we study the tides and we study the velocity of which the current is running at a particular spot. Well, September is when the tides start getting stronger than they were all summer long. And the reason being is September is the first month of the transitional time of year. The transitional time of year is when the length of days start getting really, really, really shorter. Okay? Everything to do with fish and game is about the length of days. That's how animals react. Length of days. How many hours of sunlight versus how many hours of darkness. <coughs> so, September, shorter days and the tides get stronger. What's that mean? <laughs> By the middle of October, let me tell you, it is game on. Then I am home free. It is my favorite, favorite time of year. We get about the mid-October. Whew, man, I just love it. I love getting up in the morning and feeling that nice, crisp, cool where you're wearing your sweatshirt and that type of thing, and then it's off by 10 o'clock, and then you put it back on again at 3 o'clock. So, with that said, again, length of days, stronger tides, it's starting to be go time for inshore fishermen like me. Okay? There's a lot of things we can't do in the summer that immediately start being really effective, fun, and I'd say with, with less aggravation in starting in September, October. By the time we reach November, I know we have to deal with more weather, but man, let me tell you, I'm really happy. That's my time of year. 
I got the boat, I got the jacket, I got the technique. It just works for me. It really works for me. When other people are turning around because it's too dang rough to anchor up at the jetties or something, that's why I have my boat built. So, what I'm going to show you here is some photographs from last September and last October. I'm not even going to dabble in November yet, but I'm going to do a little flipping of some photographs at the end of this video, and you'll be able to see some of the differences than what I did pretty much all summer long. I'll still be continuing. It's, what, the 24th or something here of uh, August? I will be continuing to kind of just do what I've been doing, but then things will start to change. Transitional times of year. In my book, October, April. They're your two transitional times of the year. With transitions comes productive fishing. So, I just wanted to let you know. Check out the photographs at the end of this video. Give me a holler. Give me a call. Um, visit my website at CaptainDaves.com. You can find me on Facebook at Captain Dave Sport Fishing. Um, hell, I've got a couple of different Facebook pages. Um, but at CaptainDaves.com, you can shoot me an email and give me a call. Hey, I don't mind. I don't mind a phone call. And uh, we'll get you all set up for a prime fall day. So, thanks a lot for watching. Check out the photographs, and you'll be listening to a little, little of my little favorite, the mud bugs. All right? Well, thanks for watching. Hope to have you aboard. Cheers.